That's right. I think we missed one season this year for all you climate change enthusiasts. But we'll talk about maybe that a little bit later as I tie a lot of this stuff together as I have been. Uh, seemingly with the projects I do during the week, one, a couple of them have a uh, direct connection to how what we are living under, one of the occupations as I would call them, are um, working against us right in our face. Nothing secret. We don't respond to it. Crickets. We don't respond properly to it. The crickets. And all it takes is really, uh, and it's kind of quite amazing, Anybody who steps in and asks for help to see what's going on, and I can show them where to go. As soon as they read what they're supposed to read, not all over the Internet to all different theories, but where they're supposed to read, what they're supposed to read, on the subject matter they've chose to make important. When they go read to black and white, it starts to become all more clear, and it clear it starts to be more clear and more clear, and what you're clarifying is your mind. You're putting something in your mind that actually starts to work. Not all your ideas and your the fantasies and your utopias, you start seeing exactly how this thing works. And so, interestingly to me, because I don't do this ahead of time, I kind of respond to what's coming on to try and be topical in the news so you guys know that there's something going on. Uh, it's current. But they're all tied at some point. All this stuff can be tied that's tieable, certainly, uh, to certain, certain modes of, of application and methods that are hurting everybody. Interestingly to me, that this is all coming together again, and I'm now we've been talking about this the uh, certain things that can that I can show you on an international scale. Talk about the world order. Here's one of them. I've been attempting to. Well, I'm doing it. Whether or not you're really receiving what I'm saying, I don't know. But those that really want to apply it, they pick it up pretty quick and they start to see this stuff. And it's an ongoing lesson on how to re rethink, how to really start to think about what's going on. It's building your own basis, your foundation for how to think in the uh, newspeak, of, essentially. It's a, a type of newspeak as we go through some of the terminology that you hear all the time. It's around us all the time. People don't understand what it is. Some of the things I've kind of exposed over the years are finally coming out, bubbling out slowly. I certainly can't know if I'm the source of it all, but I can certainly tell you that there was a lot of not, not speaking this way for uh, many, many years before I, but after I got in, and now we're starting to see it. That the transparency is what you are seeing through. That is now a concept starting to become more understood. And you realize that the you have to look at what someone says through their, their intention. You may not be able to know what that is, but you can build it after a while. And then you start to understand how to look at the world a little better, especially against this enemy that I can show you is there to do in one aspect. And it's uh, be get, and I keep suggesting to you, for the most part, this is an administrative world, and you have to really address that. And the and the for everyone that wants to deny the authority of a statute, no matter what its origin, if you understand international law, you know you understand even if it's a corporation or whatever that's supposedly running the show here. And I can show you where I can prove it's the bar association through the. Model Business Corporation Act. Even through that, they have to recognize certain things. And I, I'll, I have identified them to you as savings provisions, savings clauses. It's uh, where you see the limitation. of Even the corporate government, even an occupier, has these things. And I learned that through going through international law. Nothing is really set and certain. There's always a higher authority, especially if it can come in and take you out. Now, they learned, uh, the people that are doing all this stuff in this one aspect, learned to do it secretly. They secreted them themselves inside, just like the DeBar Association did. It's another NGO. Long before all this stuff that we've been talking about uh, currently, long before everyone got awoke, which they aren't, they only see enough to see what they see, and then that's it. Everyone goes back to sleep about how woke they is. And yet it's totally off point. That I've been coming here every week to start to explain. We have the conditions and the proofs throughout the world I want to tie something together when I mentioned to you that the Bar Association itself says that it is going to be promoting something called the rule of law, as I call it, the rule O law, globally. Take that to the bank. Look around the world and don't tell me that the rule of law and democracy isn't the club they come and beat down everybody with. That you can also use that if you understand how to look at this stuff. 
it's I guess empowering in a way to see those are like the two-edged swords I keep talking about. If that's everywhere, that means you can take principles from it and apply it everywhere. You can also work the reverse uh, conduit. Whatever happens someplace else is meaningful you, to you in some way where you are. You just have to convert it into something that's more recognized in how the process works for you. I don't mean you, for the system that's going to be who's oppressing you. And you look to the statutes and the codes and the rules to do that. In other words, let's say to go off a little bit here, a lot of miners are saying, I can't get in the woods. I got the forest the district ranger made a forest order closure, the exemptions. He didn't put the miners as an exemption. I pointed somebody and who pointed it out again, the ripple effect, how slow this works, but the, how sure it works. The one statute in the in the code, in the rule, excuse me, not the code, the rule, that said that the imp the authority delegated to the forest ranger to close roads does not extend to the mining law, or those accepting it and using it. It was a prohibition upon the, the delegation, as a, considered a prohibition generally in the section. Why everybody else doesn't understand how they can get in the forest as a miner, uh, as a uh, prospector, as anybody uh, underneath the mining law, I don't understand because the rule that everyone, oh, we can't do the rules, it's all this and that. The rule says whatever the regime is that's going on can't touch this. And I don't understand when I see all the objection to what goes on around the world, around in the things and how things are done and where everyone makes stuff up to see what's the better path or when I'm going to have the silver bullet, why a simple one-sentence prohibition against an authority, which makes it an authority when it starts to impose upon you, and that makes it an official, an official costume, makes it a felony, why that answer isn't better than 99 if, in every other answer. Why isn't the rule that recognizes the law that prohibits the authority simple and easy enough just to say? And then you get to go do what you get to do. Why, does it peop why don't people look at, look at things this way? Why are we having so much trouble? Then uh, I didn't, I forgot to say, I think it's BTWRLM282. So this is my problem with a lot of what I see. When you go and read the black and white, like I've said, now I have to admit, maybe it's a little obscure where you find it, but I've told you I'm here uh, where I can to guide people to where they might look. I don't know all the laws in all the states and all the world, all the countries, but I can guide you to start looking at certain things, not by all the opinions you find on the on the internet, not by how the, you thought history pulled together and made certain things happen. We have a reality we're working with, and there's a way to deal with that reality even if it's an oppression that looks lawless. And I, I can tell you the stuff I talk about isn't even close to the lawlessness that you all know is there, but you really don't, you're really you afraid to go look. And the reason why, and the reason why is because I, I think you're all, you've been miswired somehow. We've all kind of been duped. We've all been miseducated. We've all been led by the nose, and we let ourselves be led by the nose. We've dropped our principles. Why I try to bring you behind the woodshed to teach those, and not really to, I'm going to, that I want to do anything to you. I want you to learn the principle you didn't get so you can turn around and teach those that are violating you that don't have the right to. And I get crickets on that. And that's a, that's a truth. I have to accept that. It doesn't mean it's the ultimate truth. I can believe I can, that can change. And I see. And be, if it wasn't for the people that I do know that do change themselves with what I can bring on a particular thing that they've chosen, I'd set them on a path of discovery, if you will, or something that was kept from them, getting them the eyes to see their part, that little bit, it's not on me to do more. It may be not even on me in the beginning, but once I do that, then to watch everybody that does this, it takes an interest, an actual interest in making, taking responsibility. And they turn around this thing on their own, and they start to develop inroads and pathways on their own, and they start to make the changes. It condemns everybody else. And that's the little bits of people that I, I'm helping or watch take on these, these new uh, ways of thinking and methods that take them on and start to make the change are who I focus my attention on, uh, not the rest of y'all crickets, because I would probably stop if I thought that was the real end. And so at that point, I'm hoping beyond hope that the crickets uh, stop deciding uh, they don't want to they want to stop stop making that noise, that silence, that deafening silence that condemns them. And, and actually get involved. And I'm thinking, 
because it hap- seems to happen if it wasn't for the in the habitual bureaucracy that was developed to gum up everything and it was the habitual incapacity in people that are in off seats of decision that are actually not in the control seats of decision we would be moving things along a lot quicker and when we do that and we sit on the right points and we see where the problems are and we don't let those affect us we do see the responses in the system go really quickly and all we're doing is using the objective basis, the black and white, I keep telling you that so many people will just disregard. Oh, it's a code. It can't mean, oh, it's a, it's not constitutional. No, it's not, the code is just a corporation uh, rule. Okay, fine. That's what they guide on. That's how they work. It's better than having no guidance. But I guarantee you it's better than having no guidance. And that's what the new system of oppression does. It puts new guidance, it brings in no guidance, and then it prevails against you on the guidance rules it creates by your consent, whether that's in silence or your wrongful participation. So, I guess enough there. I just that's a I can go on and on and on about this, but if no one's going to really apply what I'm saying or disregard it or not listen or just listen because it's interesting and and do nothing more, again, I, I, evolutionary engagement. It's the doing of it all, folks. And we it's a battlefield as I view it uh, in in a couple of contexts. And that's probably the worst battlefield uh, to deal, uh, the, worst, the worst condition to deal in. And so I deal with it, things that way so that I'm not surprised, essentially. I don't buy into a whole lot of anything of it. I just It's how I perceive what it's going to take to move through a problem. Because I believe that there's really not a problem. I believe we have an obstruction that's causing the problem. Now, it's up to me, if I w- take this part on for a certain thing, to figure out how do I remove the obstruction within the, the habitualization that's been developed and the system that looks like it's uh, lawful, but it's not. People think it's the, the system, and it's not. It's an interposition. And coming on, without, I won't talk much more than to say we just found out uh, we're, there, this system that I told you about that's in, there in, in your country, your agencies are promoting this thing, this global thing. Your agencies are the bar association in your states. The agencies in the federal government are one of them, I I reported here to explain to you. They're integrating all this stuff in through the uh, international uh, condition. And that condition requires a method, and the method is the antithesis of your codes and laws and objective basis, which means the antithesis is how you defeat it. That should be a simple prospect, a simple concept to, to understand. And in our experience, and my experience, certainly where I started to then tell other people, my experience is when you bring the antithesis of the adjunct world in, the fictional fabrication of the utopia someone else wants for you, that not for you, but for them, uh, you can defeat them. And if you don't take this on, the, my experience is you get strung by the uh, nose and you feel frustrated and nothing goes on and you think that the system is the way it is and that must be the government. In fact, when you do it the way I'm saying, you identify what's happening is not the government. And these constitutions and objective bases are the only thing we have as a foundation, as a, a measure. Weights and measures, folks. I mean, this is really kind of pretty fundamental stuff, actually. And so we, we are finding that they're actually, because I told you this thing's like a big old monstrous uh, parasitic amoeba at one level, this thing that we're up, one of the things that we're up against, it will find it. It searches out how you are going to resist it and figures out ways to be transparent at that point or get around what you're doing. And uh, this is what we're now seeing in the subject matter of these fires. Uh, I just came across something yesterday uh, on how they're adjusting what you're going to see as data. And it, what it does is it hides the real condition and they be- and you believe that they're, what they're doing is is official science-based decisions, and it's all not. And it's in their documents to tell us so. So why would we want to make up and just be disgruntled when we can find the evidence in their own writings to show that we have a crime going against us, that that's not government, that's not an organization that well, for we the people. If it's a, a for and by the people, then the people have to stand up to protect themselves. Again, that's not my rule. And you can't do it on spacious ideas. You can't do it on creation, creating things. You can't do it 
when the oppressor says we're not going to allow it that way. And I'm saying to you now, you don't have to go through these invent, invented things. You know, one other aspect, what's come up, con, um, one of the things that I never heard talked about in this regard before I started saying it, now I see it in lots of places and almost everywhere now, it's understood, and, and it's, it will defeat the point, that the term, uh, so, uh, the term um, sovereign citizen, it's come up here this week, uh, and I've said it forever that, that I've identified this back in the 90s. That term is an oxymoron. Well, now you're starting to see more. You've heard lots of people say that. So if it's an oxymoron, how is the government getting so much so much leverage out of it? Is the wrong understanding of what's going on against those that are labeled with that and the non non proper addressment? But it's one of those terms that's out there that the government uses to marginalize people. And I've said, stay away from everything that's in that in that uh, in that pot in that pot that they call you that, and you don't have to go there. How many people go there? With all the things that are listed on what causes it, the Colorado case is a prime example. What are people that stunted in their thoughts that they can think they can outwill a power against them? And if they are, they are that stunted. Then why is anybody listening to them in the first place? is what I'm trying to get people to understand. There is a process by which, there's actually quite a few processes by which you look at something to come with the answer. The, the minor access to ingress and egress, uh, despite a forest closure order, is one of them. One sentence, folks, del- destroys the authority, makes an authorita out of something purporting to be an authority. One sentence, in the same rule that anybody else would say, oh, this is the rules of a corporation destroys that corporation's authority. Why aren't you using it? Why, why does everybody fight with me or disregard me or claim it's too complicated? When I just pointed it out to you, no. Not you, the listener here today, but when I pointed out to the ones that have asked, how is it now a problem and you can't find it in too much to decide to discuss? Why is it such a problem that we create for ourselves? And I see this happening in lots of other places. We'd rather make that excuse. We'd rather let the system run us down. We'd rather not look out in the world and actually pick up the tidbits of information that are out there to prove the point that we're saying, hey, this is a problem and we need to fix ourselves. We need to protect ourselves. We need to do it of, by, and for the people. And if I say that, then that should kick your mind into, oh, that sounds like an equity jurisdiction. Well, yes, because you work for the harm, to stop the harm for you, those in the harm, and those similarly situated. This is beyond the common law. So why are you going into common law to protect yourself when judges made it? The same bar association that's over your oppressor is making this stuff. The same system that will tell you their opinions are just opinions. They're not law. And you go there anyway. And then I have my detractors that would say, oh, so you go into the system, into the courts, and you ask for their permission. I said, I told you, if you listen carefully, no, I don't. I go to the courts... And I go and I initiate, invoke the constitutional provision, and then I out everybody that comes to trespass that case. And that essentially makes a default. There is no court decision. It's made between the parties in the invoked jurisdiction. So no, I don't go to their opinion. I go to the established judicial department branch. Now, there's another problem beyond that. And that's because this oppression has gotten so big, they try to obfuscate that, but it doesn't eliminate the matter of law, binding default judgment against those that didn't answer. Now we're looking at a bigger problem. Like I keep telling you folks, until you jump into this, you have no clue. And when you do jump into it, you're going to ju- you, most people I see, in fact all people I see, don't actually do it right. Everyone's doing a big experiment. And that, that's just wasting time in a way because as long as you experiment, the, the, you know, the, the rats get a, run, the, you know, run the ship. And I'm not saying I have the only answer, but I haven't seen many people with a consistent answer. And I certainly don't see the numbers that we need. But we can go around, let's go back and say, because the rule of law is global and promotes itself as such, it is 
then a, a global agency that you're watching that runs your life that has decision making power of opinion over what's going on but that's the system you're in you can't deny that power you then can turn around and use it if it's working uh, the rule of law is a global franchise and uh, the the members of which are working toward the the global order end which they've identified in the paperwork, and we can give it a name. I've given it a name. They've given it a name. I can use it. You can use it. We don't need to be embarrassed about using it, and we don't also don't have to make a question about it. They call it sustainable development in uh, the United States of America. They don't call it that in Europe. It's fascinating what they've done to deceive us. And so this sustainable development is a global thing. And so it ties the, the system of the bar together globally important. The rule of law is pretty consistent. It does have to meet the local standards of uh, jurisprudence of the due process that may be uh, understood the local le the local uh, legislature that has made the rule the, the law that people will follow it has to adjust to that but the decisions come mainly through the purview of the implementation of the global order and I don't get all weirded out about that it's just the fact of it I don't need to, I don't know about the, what the new world order is I can tell you who's who's functioning to make it work there's actually mon many many levels of how this works together but the Bar Association's one, and rule of law around the world is promoted as a rule of law. It's all one thing. Again, adapted to the locale. Well, they come out here this last uh, week or two, and uh, the New Zealand court, for those of you that are into wondering what they're feeding you to dumb you down, and I told you, if you're dumbed down, how are you going to respond? Maybe partly why I get so much resistance. You're dumbed down. You don't know it. It takes a long time sometimes to get some of these things out that you were did have, uh, the way their body systems work, maybe sometimes there's not a way to leach out some of this stuff. Uh, but those of us that are woke and we've done enough research uh, know some of the tr more the more heinous truths that are upon us. But those who talk about being woke usually don't act correctly once they get the knowledge. Uh, but we have the facts of the problem developing, and I think notwithstanding where this is in New Zealand, this decision on something that's been put into our system. What they said in this regard, given that the rule of law made the decision, and that rule of law is promoted globally to be uh, independent of everything and uh, supposedly impartial, I think we can take this one to the bank, that fluoridation is mass medication. Fluoridation is mass medication is a title that uh, from a decision that came out of a New Zealand Supreme Court. Now, I've got the link here later in the broadcast. You get, you can read that there's three actual orders that came from this. You have to find, I think it was the earliest one I think I found, uh, where they talk about uh, the order that dis discusses fluoridation as mass medication. It says a whole lot of other stuff in this, in this, in this decision as well. Now, I, I've told you in the United States of America, if you go through Title 50, they can do that to you. I've told, that's what I exposed to Clint Richardson is a lethal injection. I said, Clint, you need to look at this. No different than I pointed out to those that will go and read it and him as well. I said, you need to look at how this is actually set up. It's not set up like we thought it was. Your initiation is to go read 42 U.S.C. 1981 and really think about what they're saying there. Those of you who listen to me for a long time, you know. You know what that's about. You've done some research and you understand this whole thing is inverted from the get-go. And I said, so based in that and the other things I told you about the Libra Code and the occupation and all this, let's on run on over to Title 50 in the United States Code and look at what they get to do with you. Look at all the savings provision to the occupier, the government itself. And look at the authority they're using to do that. And he saw that. He saw the importance of it. And it, it, the parts that fit that in lethal injection, he, he, he uh, cite, cited in that video. The point I'm trying to get to you, folks, is that there's the government has taken, any government has taken license to harm you. And you've said really nothing about it. There are some um, provisions for interfering with that. I don't know anybody that actually does all that. But, but anyway, it's there. Now, when I see this, part of me says, okay, fine. Well, now they just caught themselves doing mass medication and they probably have some national security interest for doing so but if that's the point of the national security interest uh, and they were supposed to be working for you that kind of outs them automatically but maybe they're not working for you anymore that should be some of an alarm and then you find out maybe you're incapacitated by some of this 
but now it's come out in an official New Zealand discussion that fluoridation is mass medication. Well, the medication for what, folks? I'm not going to even really go through about that. It's just a fascinating read, and I'd, I'd rather see have you guys all read the black and white. You need to see this black and white. Like I said, those that I pointed out, how you get ingress, ingress and egress rights to your uh, claims in, in, in the United States of America, to your mining claims, despite what the Forest Service or whatever order of, of, of uh, road closure is, are blown away. They, oh, it actually says that, they say. And it's not hard to understand. And this is the kind of thing I'm looking at here. Maybe fluoridation is not something important to you. Maybe you don't think you're affected by it. Those of you that are listening to me that are, you need to get this link. You need to see what one government is saying, one rule o law body, who is also a rule o law body in your country, is saying about this. Whether or not it's directly applicable is not my point. The point would be, it's evidence. It's evidence to counter the agency records that are, or the local counties that are making decisions for fluoridation. If we had it's not, this is not just, oh, it's not good for you. This is a decision that says it's a medication, and it's a mass medication. And the problem was, they said there was no way to opt out. And you have to understand what that meant. This is another clue. And so, I don't, I don't really want to get into the floor. I mean, I'm not here to discuss what a lot of people already know about the fluoridation thing. I don't, that's really not my point. But this is does expose that the government allowed something considered now in delay, in non evidence of non disclosure to everybody in the moment that it was brought in to be a mass medication tool. I just sit here and I'm thinking, you know, what are people going to do with what I just said? Probably nothing. But the impact of this, the the importance of understanding that this is not just something that affects you adversely. This was implemented as a medic mass medication tool. And when I think about that, and I think about Title 50, and I think about, at least in front of the United States of America, agreeing to do that, to medicate its, medicate its populace, first of all, it starts to, oh, that's why they're doing all this other nastiness to us and getting away with it. And then the fact is that they will, and then for what reason? And it's hard for me to get away from this occupied territory thing. I really have trouble. I've been, I've been looking for the outs and the, the facts of how we're not occupied and why, how it all isn't the way I've been seeing it, Why the emer answering why the, why is there always a constant emergency? Somewhere, some war been declared. Why all this nonsense? And we see the harm it all brings. And we, we jump on the harm and we jump on how ridiculous it is, but we're not jumping on the fact that it was implemented for a purpose and what that purpose might be. So, fluoridation is mass medication should be a, re, a real pr provable wake-up call, piece of evidence. How you're going to use that locally, that you have to go investigate a bit more. But to me, this was a kind of a big deal. Not just that fluoridation is what it, that it any, even is harmful. It's considered a medication, and there's no way to get away from it. And then if you go to the countries like New Zealand or the United States of America, which they claim were independent, but you know, they all come out of the crown, and they all come out of the... Uh, you got, if you look very carefully, you still got linkages inside your constitutional documents that uh, I haven't been able to break that still make some older connection. These are all really running under the same condition in any way, that you, you can't really dis distinguish this decision in New Zealand from the United States of America. And then you see Title 50 that says, well, hey, they're, they've given them, the government's given themselves license to do this, and no one said anything. Maybe it's time to say stuff. Maybe it's time you use this, these, these things to show. How can it not be a mass medication in one place uh, when it's uh, in another place? How, how is it that they can, in a country like the United States where they require your consent, they can do it where there's no so-called opt-out? And this opt-out is a trap because they never really had the right to do that either if you know how to address that. That's like the smart meter thing. They, get, they impose this thing without the administrative uh, concurrence with the constitutional due process and they impose that thing, and then they argue about an opt-out fee. 
Well, they didn't have any right to make the op out. So you start talking about the fee or not, or the fact of its existence, just the fact of it's there is a vo constitutional violation. You don't, you don't art, jar, uh, con challenge that. They win. And if you think I like working this stuff through and t just to be able to tar articulate a bit of it to you, you better really be thinking again. I, I despise this stuff. In fact, I'm going through it this week. New thing came up. I've got to, I talk to myself for two, three days. Yeah, I talk to myself. Silently, of course. I'm arguing with myself about how much I hate doing this. And part of me saying that, like, like two little, the, the two, the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. Now, how much I hate doing this and then how much I have to do it. So don't don't think I'm promoting anything here. It's just what needs to be done. And don't think like, oh, I just jump in and have all the answers. No, it can be a lot of work, and it and it, it, it comes at, at, there are sacrifices at some level. You have to make decisions and choices that may not be so palatable. They certainly don't seem normal. But what's normal? Normal is a bunch of people that are dysfunctional. Normal are a bunch of people that have a right to be in a forest to go mining and can't. Even though there's no law against it. In fact, the law supports them. That's normal. That's the new normal. That's this system training everybody to accept, whether by just buying in, whether just giving in, or whether just ignoring it be, despite its condition and its harm. That is strictly written out on how you're, that, that's your nature. And we have to, that's the same discussion I have. I hate doing this. Well, I, I don't want to have to go do something about this. Well, but it's necessary. So fluoridation is mass medication, pretty big deal. I'll give you two links a little bit later. Anybody who's into fluoridation, I guess I could, you know, make programs about this, but why, I don't see why. We know it's no good. We now know it's a medication system. Now you understand why when they talk about lithium and putting it in the water, it, it wasn't a second thought. The other thing is that you now have to do is look behind the scenes and who's doing that? Who was the impetus for this? I don't think you're going to find it's not too far away from the overarching condition that I've explained to you that the EPA in the United States and what we are told all EPAs in all countries do, that environmental pillar, you see how that's all connected? That's how they make this stuff. And I've told you earlier, they're making the models that go through risk management instead of reality. And our lives are, are transformed into... I hate to use the term, but people understand it. Virtual reality. It's the reality they've fabricated that you agree to that isn't actually fact. And I say that, I wonder how many people realize what I just said. It's not just I'm complaining that, hey, this is not, not, not meeting reality. No, they have made you fit into a, the reality that they want. It isn't reality. And they'll give you all the best science to prove that they're right, and it's all a fraud. So here, we have a proof. Fluoridation is mass medication. This case says a whole lot more. I'll give you a couple couple links. Uh, obviously, fluoridation uh, is something that you should op be able to opt out and can't, and where well, you can't, and uh, it, it's not something that a doctor prescribed it. That's for darn sure. And then for what purpose? Should be quick questions right on your lips. That, that's something pres so-called prescribed now through the water system that was no good for us. Now, if the government's able to do that, and I point out, I bring up the lethal injection inclusion of Title 50, to, I say that only, well, I'll give Clint credit for his lethal injection, absolutely. What I want to point out is that there's someone who put this in, the, in, in before your, your, your awareness in a documentary before I'm telling you. So this is not new a new application of Title 50 or some new awareness. This is what they planned all along that now got found out. And they have license. The government gave itself license to do that. Now, whether that's a right license, I don't know. That. Until someone steps up and actually starts to do that challenge, it maintains itself as a valid license. And this is the problem until someone sits up. So they're willing to do things that are no good for you. And they'll do, do it to you, and they'll wait until someone gets the right answer to get the right, ask the right question to get the right answer, 
And now we find out that what they were telling us was good for your teeth. It's certainly not good for you. And, and it's a medical treatment. Think about that. So now we have evidence, if we, did, if we didn't have any idea before, even though I'm telling you it's all in the black and white, it's all in the title, it's all in the codes, it's all, that what you're, what's happening to you is in there, it's how I got here, it's how, how I was able to see, it's how I can predict, if you will, predict the future. And something else pops up, I better move along so I can get to it today. Uh, so they, they'll prescribe things for you, they'll do, the government will set up things that are good, that they claim are good for you that aren't. Well, here's another study on something else that they said they need that helps us all out that people oh we need to have law enforcement and they come out with a big club and big jack boot and beat you all down and oh that must be what we need well they find out now research paper shows militarized SWAT teams don't make cops or the public any safer so those of you in the first amendment audits and those in the police and the over uh, police abuse and and the the fact of the government uh, having these things the fact that money's appropriated for these things uh, now can uh, be addressed uh, going to this uh, study start that as your foundation i said you're going to have to make everything that's common knowledge is going to now have to be made a law because what's uh, insane and uncommon uh, outside of your formal establishment is what's ruling your life the study has been released confirming that many have what many have suspected militarization of law enforcement doesn't make communities safer has zero effect on officer safety and is rarely deployed as advertised when the agencies make pitches for the acquisitions of military gear so these pitches are fraud then and uh, this is the whole thing about the federal government making the offer but here's three things right in the first paragraph you can start off that I would uh, be looking at uh, making a points of. I'd bullet point those out. I'd get the proof in an, as an amendment, and I'd go approach the, uh, the, uh, the, the councils that are making the decisions for appropriations for these things and the, uh, and the agencies that are making pitches for the uh, military gear. This is a fraud. This doesn't really work. This actually hurts people. Now you have the evidence. See, this is not just news to me. This is evidence. I, I saw a, a meme Twitter thing go through Somebody was, and I was going to respond, but I really don't like to respond because people don't really have the mentality to respond back in the proper way. They think I'm trying to fight them or something. I'm trying to expose something. More importantly, I'm trying to get them to do something. A meme went through that explained that the court's opinions are not the law. The Supreme Court doesn't make law. It makes an opinion. It really has no value at some level. Now, it has value to the parties, but like, like, like uh, Scalia said right before he died, in response to people objecting to what the Supreme Court said, he said, well, you brought the question to us, and we just answered it. Why are you getting mad at us for what, something you asked for? So the opinions of the courts are not, not anything at some level as well. There's a reality, and I ask you to speak to that. There's a report that speaks to a reality. We don't have to take it. And all those areas that have not been studied, those of you that have the capacity to, to study and create a study that's really unassailable, is what we need you to do so the, some other people get to pick those studies up and go after things like this. SWAT is the main tool now for serving warrants. When did that happen? Well, partly partly through the, um, excuse me, the uh, war on drugs. Another fraud. Another false front, another you know, spaghetti western thing we get to enjoy in the world. Remember, even NEPA under environmental law says we should have, we're supposed to be making rules and regulations and, and controls and things like that that make, provide productive, enjoyable harmony with our environment. What's productive, enjoyable about being swatted? And now here's the study, folks. This is the facts of what's coming down. I'm sure there's going to be challenges for the people that want to be oppressors about how great this is, uh, how, how invalid this report is. That's up to you to decide. I'm saying here it is, folks. Those of you that want to stop the cops from killing people, those that take that on as a cause, here's your first uh, way to get at the SWAT side. Now, I'm sure we get a lot of SWAT, these SWAT groups out of the way. Uh, they're not going to have a lot of people dying when they go to execute warrants. They'll just be a knock on the door, or maybe they'll just arrest them traveling somewhere with the warrant, like they used to do. But see, there's big, there's big control, big money in this, there's big destruction, there's big oppression, there's big example to make against the inferiority and the, um, the incapacity of people. And you are incapacitated, so they prove it every day. 
And but this can be ended now eventually. It took a while. Again, justice is not swift, as they say. I think that's a lie, but that's what they get us to believe. But here is now finally for those of you that might understand it, uh, how to work this or want to start to work it. A report on the SWAT teams don't do anything, actually. But they've been promoted to help save you, to help treat you like any other medication that's falsely prescribed. And I guess that's where I'm going with the New Zealand thing. It's a mass medication. What else is a mass medication? What else has been falsely prescribed? And you're going to look around, and that's the, everything that anybody's got a brain in their head looks out and says, I'm, I'm false, I've been falsely prescribed all kinds of stuff. I say, okay. You have a meme go through the Twitter. It says that there's no opinion that the courts give that is, is law, and, and then you did what with it? And that was my main contention. Okay, you see it now. What are you going to do with that little factoid? Not just talk about it. What are you going to do with it? Now, you could take it, in my mind, because I've kind of done a little bit of that. In fact, I did do it in two ways. What paths? I know there's a couple paths of what you will do with that. I don't know about all the paths, but there's a couple paths. Once you realize that's the fact, and you've been told that's the truth, there's some paths on how to remedy that. And I've explained one of them already. On how I, I did it today. I just did it again in this broadcast. So, another proof. What's prescribed for us as a medical treatment is not. On many levels, the first paragraph was kind of neat because it lays out three bullet points for you right there. And then there's, there's two more built into that one. And as you get into the story, there's all kinds more that you can develop and pull out to show what they've done with this thing is not, doesn't do what they claim, hasn't, can't do what they claim, and now more importantly is really not needed. So I just laid you out some more paper, some more statements, well, bullet points. You're not going to hear me wax eloquent about the Constitution, the rights, and all that stuff. No, we're going to talk directly on the point of the efficacy of an SWAT team as promoted, as a fraud. We promote it, and we find out it's a fraud. That's how we start moving this thing forward. And we have a fraud that causes adverse problems. That's the other part of that. You make an objection with a reason. Like if I'm doing the fire, uh, looking at the fire problem and the smoke... Uh, and the policy already sits there, the low bar, I have to show that the policy is not being followed, and that then causes an impact which the action is now required to mitigate, to at least mitigate, if not eliminate. That's the formula. That's how you do it. you got to do the objection to what's existent, show how the failure, failure to do what was existent, and how those two failures, if, or first failure and then possibly a second one even better, causes impacts that are uh, and then you have to show the magnitude such a high level that it requires a response and when you point it that you lay it out most people see the clarity of that even though they're ob totally oblivious to how this thing came on them you, they are now able to see that with clarity the thing that's obscured to make things transparent so no one can see them are now you make opaque that layer which was the corruption by your clarity of tell, painting them in what they're actually doing. So here the government will take and prescribe things, mass medications that are no good for us, and they'll deny other things that are good for us, or at least now coming into the reports again, weed seems to protect your liver from effects of hard drinking. Again, I could care less about weed, that way. Uh, a lot of people do, and I absolutely agree with the medical side of that. I don't care about the other side, the recreational, that's up to y'all. For me, it's not an importance. But, for the vilification that's gone on a plant, I'm totally against that. And what they've done with it, and this is also part of the drug, drug war, isn't it? This plant. Well, they find out that instead of taking your uh, Carter's little liver pills, they should have been smoking weed. Or whatever they did here. That that it 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 heal helps to heal alcohol poisoning. It helps to heal the liver. So why are they medicating mass medicating us with things that harm us and not allowing us to be privately medicating ourselves, which we have all the full right. If you also knew that part, and I've explained all this too, 
on the production side. They funnel you into the commerce side, and they get you for commerce crimes, like contraband on the high seas type stuff. And you don't say, wait a minute, no, I had this private production right here, and this is where it ties through the law of the land. Not the law of the land you found in the Constitution, the one that they granted to you. Yes, they, the government, granted it to you, and that sets up a relationship that cannot be overthrown. Well, without major uh, overthrow of all of international law, actually. But at any rate, it's not for me to say here. I keep suggesting these things. Until somebody jumps into it, they won't see it. So it's not sense, no sense to re- keep talking about it. For those of you into, into the weed, I don't care what you call it, what, you can call whatever name you want. Here it shows a, a medical effect counter to medications. So why aren't we jumping in with the evidence of this fraud to vilify this plant? I don't understand it, but here, for those of you interested, that finally want to step in and make it important, you start building up the various uh, rules and decisions and findings and health, uh, health things that are going on. Uh, you're going to show what's going on in the agencies or whatever the underlying agenda of pharma is and uh, inside uh, the revolving door to the agencies, all that. You will expose all that by re- producing the reality with evidence. That's all I'm asking you to start to consider to do learning the principle of how to reapply and reassert the things you are supposed to be vigilant in protecting yourself with. That wasn't on anybody else. None of my listeners were able to put that on anybody else. It was on each one of us. Then they kind of got in our way. They gave us fluoride and we can't think, or they give us Carter's little pills and we can't do something else, and then we have side effects and we're all interested in that, and then they didn't teach us how to respond. We can't write a, we can't write a letter anymore. Came stay on point, and then we wonder why our our place went to, to our place looks like a junk heap. Now we don't even control the debt. It's because of all this laid backness of it. And I've heard that weed can do that. Maybe not a good subject matter, but I'm asking you to against your nature. I'm asking you to step up against the nature to do nothing and be just cash about it, and actually bring this thing forward and remove this as another. Obst- um, tool of oppression by the government. One less thing. You want to talk about one less? Gardasil? Yeah, this will be Garda, Garda us. Garda us. It's all there to do. Weed seems to protect your liver. Fascinating. You know, pretty cool. Pretty cool. One of these days I may have a liver problem. I'm going to be, I don't remember that. But in the meantime, had I had more time, I could put together quite a dossier of crime fraud and uh, an intent to hurt us especially when I see the government's willing to do mass medications they certainly are going to make a a medical system that's going to make mass medications underneath some standard that may or may not be science and we find out we look back through western medicine and I'm not talking about the technology side the fact of its existence and its transfer back in the 1900s into what it is today when you see that it's all profit oriented and control then you start to see what the problem really is. And you start seeing a motive behind how they got to where we were, and we were silent on it. The day has ended when we can maintain silence and still care, hold a gripe, is all I can say. Anybody who gripes about this stuff is just a hypocrite, is a, is a, hypoc- a whiner. You're just useless to yourself, and you're useless to everyone else. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's that's what goes on. That's what's happening. The miner who couldn't act, ingress and egress his property where the law per- absolutely said so is a hypocrite, a whiner, a victim, a self-inflicted wound victim. He's a cutter. He cuts himself and he watches himself bleed and he complains about it. That's us as a society. I told you the microcosm of the miner is the macrocosm we know as America. And I would say other places. There was no law to stop it, and they were stopped. Amazing to me. At some point, it's a big joke. I mean, part of me is laughing a lot. But because it's killing us, because it's, I mean, I'm having to sit around doing things I'd rather not do. It's something that's become important, and for a long time for me. So they prescribe this stuff. They don't want to give you what actually works. They don't want to leave you free to make that decision. There's so many things that go involved here. We talk about it. All the people that are woke know that stuff, but you won't take the next step. Oh, you'll identify that there's no there's no opinion that can stand that that is not as the law, but you won't take that fact and put that in practice. 
And this is the limit that they've got us in doing. They'll give us, once they say, it's like, take the red pill. Oh, I took the red pill, I'm woke. I see the matrix. Well, folks, it's all an illusion. Get off the pills. See, the pills are mass medication. Get, step back and look at that and take responsibility. Yes, it's very instructive about the red pill. It doesn't mean you get lost in it. So, how, this matrix that they bring on, we recognize it's there, and yet we continue to absorb everything that's offered to us, like the Silent Weapons from Quiet Wars talks about. Another weapon against us, utilizing our own frailties against us, and our lack of wanting to take on responsibility, and our lack of will to, to maintain it. Letting, letting the voice that says, you know, you really hate doing this, so don't win. Uh, the future of mobile driver's license licenses, massive profits, and loyalty rewards now hits the news, as I predicted would be happening, as many people probably did who did see this. Uh, again, the technology is there to do it. It's writing on the wall. I, you could see it uh, way in the past. Uh, when I was doing my research about this stuff, you could see it coming. This is, like I said, I think the only reason why I'm here today is because I could see it back when. Uh, and it just had to, took them time to get to a place to be able to talk to people. And when I got here and talked to people, very few people really want to hear it. Well, they want to hear some of it, but they don't want to do anything with it about it. And that's really where the terror is for me, and it's going to be terror for society. That we're now uh, seeing, and this is just another article you can read about it, uh, for years the mainstream media has been pushing mobile driver's license, mobile driver's license. We talked about that uh, technology here years and years ago. Uh, it's all in your phones. Again, your phones are going to be your passport into uh, the new world order. And you keep it up. Keep going in there uh, with all of its vulnerabilities, with all of its... Uh, Whatever, all the all the ramifications that go through that little device is phenomenal. Interesting too. It's it's the uh, it's the um, mercurial realm too. The information and data exchange, mercurial realm. It's also the it's also the field of the devil. If we go there, right? This is all the symbology too. As we've gone through eons of time with ourselves, if there's eons to have gone through. We're dealing in this in the realm in this digital medium. We're dealing in that realm. We're dealing in that source of of authority. People, I don't think, appreciate that point and why it's so powerful and why it works so well. But going on, your mobile driver's license of all things of all things hackable. <laughs> you think a crypto? You think this crypto, this block ledger stuff, isn't all tied into all this? You better really start thinking very quickly and. Uh, on this and start to figure what I've been suggesting is going to happen and and uh, you requiring that you make an alternative and if you're not going to make an alternative you're just going to be another one of those rings in the nose beasts being driven into the into the water and you're not going to care about whether you drink they're going to drown you MDL companies these mobile driver's license companies now you thought that driver's license were a state function didn't you it's not a far jump when you find out the Bar Association made a state uh, into a corp under the Corporate Business Act, Model Business Corporation Act, and, and now these companies get to China. They look the same, don't they? There's not much difference between the public and private partnership, is there? See, the original one of the original public-private private partnerships uh, before most uh, of us uh, was the uh, assimilation of the Bar Association in the agencies of the state and then the readoption, uh, uh, the, the, the substitution, the supplantation of, of the permanent laws of the people for that model business corporation act that's the original one of the original identifiable public private partnerships that's fascism too <laughs> looked up really sometimes on the edge of a real bust out bust a gut on how how stupid we are how funny this whole thing could really be but really what look at what's going on so mdl companies these mobile driver's licenses companies want to encourage motorists to use digital driver's license by tying them into loyalty rewards programs and various services. We'll give you $5 worth of groceries to get a vaccine injection. That's another little picture I saw. And they have a barcode for all this. And what I found interesting, the flu shot has a barcode, but the one marked pneumonia didn't have the word shot after it. The one shingles didn't have shot after it. Well, I'm looking at that. Maybe they're selling you shingles. Maybe they're selling you pneumonia because they could use the word shot in the first barcode. 
And I, I would believe totally what I just said is actually what's going on, but people don't quite get into that. But they're going to induce you and entice you to buy in. They're going to, we're going to give you $5 of the groceries to get this free shot. And this is what they do, loyalty rewards. I told you this was coming. I told you this was what the, actually the loyalty rewards for the, that predated this in, the, in stores was about. All your information is tied together. It'll all be put on a blockchain at some point. <laughs> Whatever the name is, whoever, whatever MDL company uh, will, will, will own that. According to an interview with David Holmes, identity management, identity management, identity management and security commercial director. <laughs> oh man, maybe I just jumped over and got nuts. This is so stupid in our face, I can't even like sometimes hold it back, folks. He says, those potential benefits include freeing consumers from carrying around a plastic card, increased use across jurisdictions, and more control over what information from driver's licenses is shared with application-specific exposure. We repeat that, with application-specific exposure. It could also potentially be used for payments, loyalty programs, and for various services that require authentication. It just might be used for those things, too. Now, if you don't understand what I just read, what he just said, he just told you that that's your prison card. That that's your prison identity. And they're going to manage it. Kind of like they manage the fires through risk management. And you'll see now the tying into some of that, or not. I don't know what to say. I see it as I talk about all this stuff's running through my mind. Uh, for but what about loss of privacy? Who in their right mind would ever provide their personal driver's license information to a retailer so they could receive a discount? You get free five dollars of the food for an injection, folks. So this is what the question is written by this author, and the continual promotion. And I won't read any more. Much more here. Uh, commit, the continued promotion to keep pushing on you to buy into this thing. And what this is showing you, that your so-called driver's license is now becoming commercialized in a much more expensive way to be used as a profit-making tool. As I told you, watch the big data, going to be worse than your state control. And here's the proof on a mobile driver's license. How convenient. But this is what the point is. They're going to get you to buy in and when, then they mandate it. And remember, real ID is coming. So don't, don't, don't under, underestimate the problem with that going to be, I understand, no waiver after 2020. In hindsight, we're revisions 2020. <laughs> oh, man. Mobile driver's license. I want to remind you that's in commerce. That means it's tied to that franchise in commerce using the what? The Internet in commerce. This is a commerce tool of enslavement, this entire thing. Everything digital. The Internet of Things is a cage that you're plugging yourself into to the point that you're going to have such a convenient tool as your mobile driver's license. And I've told you that's the phone they hand you. It's going to get much, the technology is going to get down to where they only need to give you what you need to have. The phone is way too big still. It's going to get a lot smaller what they need. You just might be given the benefit. Maybe you can use some to buy. You use this technology to buy something. with. So this little article was pretty indicative of the commercial control coming on us that we're adopting. I'm asking you to back out of this. Use the technology to advance what you need, but do not engage with these things. Uh, start again stepping back and saying, well, how am I going to get to a place that's inert or more inert? And that's why, Sarah, I think it's a part of the answer to that would be get away from blockchain in the context of where it's obviously going. We're not withstanding everybody that I know that's, that I know of that's involved and would say, oh, that will be afraid. No, you look at what's going on. I'm not talking about the blockchain you're interested in today. I'm talking about the one that's being the cage that's being built around this technology and the future in position uh, that's going to be made mandatory. And then how are mandatory? Remember, even an emergency situation, mandatory is only mandatory for those uh, that don't know their rights and, and comply. And this is happening again in these fires. If you understand the forest closure was based on fire, yet there's a law that says nothing in that forest closure can stop a miner. Now you've just seen the right writing on the wall. There's no closure order against a miner. I have a right to ingress and egress. You're a mandatory, mandatory. Um, 
block a closure is not mandatory on me. Remember, the people that stand, you have the right to make the decision to die somewhere. Remember Mount St. Helens. I wish I remember that guy's name. I don't remember. I was thinking it kind of came close, but I didn't quite get it. He, he made the decision to stay on his little half acre there and got blown away by Mount St. Helens. He, it was a mandatory mandatory uh, evacuation, but he didn't. And he, he paid the ultimate price. He was an old guy, but he paid the ultimate price. But that's the point. You see free being free right there. People don't appreciate that. And so mandatory is only if you're ignorant. Uh, you're going to follow that. You're going to you only do what you know. I'm asking you to raise your <laughs> raise what your knowledge is. And when mandatory comes around, you have an alternative. You have something you can point to, and you have a word in your mouth about that. And I'm been saying, well, if you don't go into that system, you can't be forced into it. They do to get to your consent. They can make it hard on you, but that's a coercion and an extortion. You can out that. And, but you're going to have to have something else, some place else you need to be. As I've told you before, just don't deny a place. You have to find yourself a place. And you have to be from there. And you have to make it such a place that they can't touch you there. Uh, and so silver coin tends to do that. Remember, if even the Fed, that debt system has to take it as an asset. It can't put it on the books. So there's a clue. Now, there's also a clue on what the part of the, part of the cage is about. How they're getting us wrapped up. Another another part of that is, I tell you, this military occupation. It's just a regular occupier. And a lot of things funnel through that. What may not be understood is how much pre-dating is going on and pre-planning has gone on before we got here. That has already been in the works and coming around that we finally get news of it. That I've been trying to point out is your evidence that you're living in that cage. But there's 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 a key. You can find the key. Remember, even in the Bible it said that uh, there's a key to find, and those that have the key will be obstructed. It says that. That doesn't say that the obstruction is permanent. It just means that there's going to be a potential obstruction. I'm going to guarantee, tell you, guarantee that. You can get, there's a key to get, a key to the kingdom, and when you get that key, you're going to be obstructed in the use of it. It doesn't say you're not going to be able to use that key. Am I the eternal optimist? Well, as I said that. And so, that's how I seem. it seems to work. Uh, so we move into now the realm I've told you was coming, and now we got the evidence of this. This technology, this cage they've been building, it's uh, really the military consequence. It's actually an economic control. Uh, we see a lot of that written right into the, uh, for those of us that are looking at it, uh, again, the Agenda 2020 is all about sustainable debt. But we have to have a control grid. We have to have the, the ones that are having the power, the the force, the actual physical force to keep you constrained where they have an authority have to be ahead of the game. They have to do the same things as monitoring and all this. Well, we're going to find out that that military, which you think is a, the most powerful country in the world with a military, it also is following sustainable development guidelines in how, what it's looking at in the future to enforce. If, if you don't, don't think that this thing is a wrapped up package. And so we have evidence of that today. It comes in the interesting little spots, but here it is anyway. The Pentagon wants AI to take over scientific processes. Now remember I told you that they want sci AI to take over scientific process because they use best science, best science, to defeat you because it becomes the authorita without a foundation, and you don't know that. If you don't think what I've been talking about in this regard is critical to the future and how you're going to have to understand this if you uh, dare choose to re be responsible for yourself and, and your society, you're, you're going to have to understand what's going on here. The project is part of DARPA's newly launched Artificial Intelligence Exploration Program, which aims to develop next-generation artificial intelligence applications. Okay, so that sets you up on what they're looking for, artificial intelligence applications. They said in the title they want to be able to create scientific hypotheses. <laughs> We're not, not, not coming up with anything. They're not proving anything. They want to say that's the best science. I said, what happens when your best science is no science at all? What happens if your best science is fraud? 
and you put your standard against best science, you've just defeated yourself. If you allow that, you've defeated yourself. But this is where the military is going. It's going into best science. Well, that's not even the half of this. Who, you know, okay, so they're making artificial intelligence like we heard Watson. They're supposed to augment their intelligence when, in fact, when they do the debate, it commands the debate is the problem here right there. But let me get on to where they start talking about the interesting stuff and how it starts to tie into something that's already existing, an oppression upon you that uh, may be acknowledged but won't be fought correctly, won't understand the method of being used to destroy you, won't address it about being that method, and won't apply the right uh, response uh, to this thing where there is responses, as I've said today, today completely with the same mining uh, ingress and egress answer. There's a law, uh, one sentence that says that there's no authority to stop that, and yet everyone gets stopped. It's amazing. This is the type of authority that will be built into the system, and no one will go check to see it has no validation. But this is what they intend to do with it, and then I'm going to show you how it ties over to what I've been talking about in uh, the understanding, reading the words, and having it guide you in through a thing that is actually functioning. You look at a terminology to direct you on what's going on. It's like follow the money. Well, this is follow the method. So I'm going to read this part here as a highlight. I'm going to go to three spots, I think, in this whole article. This is where they're coming in. DARPA's coming to make this bird want to take AI, and they want to make it be the science. What it decides will be science. What they want is an automation of model-based inference procedures could increase the speed and accuracy with which these models can be used to address key questions of national security by orders of magnitude. Your life, future life is going to be based on models of models. And this is risk management. This is what I'm getting at in tying all this stuff back together as well. Another nuance coming on that they're now shifting to in the policy considerations of the data and information they come back and give to you. If you don't understand this is the dynamic, you you're going to miss it. You'll be looking the wrong way when the when the 659 rolls through, wondering what the rumble was about. It goes on to say that the said system could be used to verify the results of scientific studies and monitor, quote, fragile economic, political, social, or environmental events. Monitoring, folks by science. The best science monitor. Remember I told you they gather data, they do the monitoring, they do the analysis. Then what they do is that the action they take is what the anal analysis says you have figured out that's bringing them to be less transparent to you in these subject matter areas. Economics, politi political, social, or environmental events. Let me pull out the one. What's the one word here we haven't heard too much about in the list of three that I've of here is the word political. Let me suggest to you that when science and uh, politics, you hear people straddling science and politics, that's a lobbyist. That is the political. And so what you're seeing in this addition of the word politic, political to economic, social, and environmental events, you're seeing the you're seeing the implementation of the lobbying that's going to um, uh, help continue and hide the the demands. Now, what is it that we're talking about? Well, let's go to those three words that I told you before. You can follow through this if you just identify just three words that's always used, economic, social, and environmental. Remember, I did a whole project about that, a program about that, a broadcast, and I also showed you who's involved with that. The one pillar, remember, there's the three pillars, economic, social, environmental. The imposition through lobbying is the political aspect. of uh, Every one of those in, is a political what is the EPA involved with but environmental? It's the promoter of the environmental pillar of what? Sustainable development. That's all in the documents. I read it, what, a couple broadcasts about it. Oh, go. The, a, the, billet, the Pentagon is going to make AI for the purpose of economic, social, and environmental events is the three pillars of sustainable development. Let me go on. It kind of now brings us into the proof, of a, a, a better proof. We're not talking about anything else. The future Pentagon imposition globally is going to bring this order called sustainable development, which is not constitutional, it's not law, it's, it's adjunct, it's ad, ad, adversarial, underneath one centralized power. And you don't have to have a 
absolutely centralized. You just have to have everyone following the same game plan. They've almost got that, actually. Remember that A2030 is the financial sustainable debt where you're always going to be obligated, and you're, you have no wealth. Your stuff is going to be shared with everyone, as well as the obligation. And remember, sustainable development is a concept demand on you. The a military is looking to make an AI create a scientific basis for their demand to come. And they're utilizing economic, social, environmental pillars to do that. Is nothing more than what we described before that the EPA tells you is their part for the pillar of environment as they promote what? The sustainable development. And they have sustainability tools. We went through that too. I'll bring that up in a second. Here's the here's the here's another clincher part. In this article, and you start wondering, what did, why did they even talk like this? But here it is. Here's another proof. And once you have the eyes, to, I, I believe I have the eyes to see this. And once I see this, it leads to a lot of other things that starts to make a different sense and actually better sense than what we see and what we're told. And then we're not going to be told certainly this. We're told the double speak. We're just given, oh, this is a grand thing that AI is going to be able to tell all science. We're going to be able to monitor how that works, and we're going to be able to keep all the fact of our, our magic show hidden from you. This next sentence is a kind of indicative of this system. It's described in different ways. These so-called, this system that's doing this, that they're, built, they're trying to find and develop the next generation of artificial intelligence applications, focused on the three pillars of sustainable development, the Pentagon is doing, these so-called third-wave AI systems come over, would overcome the limitations of existing machine learning and rule-based AI tools. These so-called third-wave AI systems, have you ever heard that term before, third-wave? And Why would they be using that? They're at sixth generation jets. Why are they using third wave? You didn't say here quantum, have you? That's the other thing that was kind of interesting. But let's go to this term, third wave. They put it in quotes. They're calling it something. Where have we, have we seen that before? Well, let's look and see where do we find third wave. And up pops in your little magic search window, third wave sustainability. Smart growth and regional development in the U.S. Why are they calling third wave AI that speaks in the terms of economics, environment, and social that's tied to sustainable development? And you go and you can get on the internet and find a third wave sustainability system that deals with smart growth regional development in the U.S. In the U.S. It's already here. The Pentagon's going to be enforcing this, folks. If you don't think we're already militarily uh, oppressed. Title 50, folks. This is all tied together again as I, as I think about that. All this stuff ends up tying together. The third wave sustainability, smart growth and regional development in the United States, regional studies, regional studies. This is consolidation, folks, another term. They consolidate multi-jurisdictional or multi-disciplines into one plan. That's consolidation. They tear the boundaries down of any jurisdiction by this, and they're called, they regionalize this whole thing. It's in the U.S. called the third wave. And it said it was called something right before that, and I'm going to get to that. Let me sit, let me finish reading through this. Third wave, re, smart growth, regional de development in the United States. The same thing. The United uh, the Pentagon, the United States Pentagon, is making AI to figure out and monitor. This is also true in the U.S. Uh, through not not through local Agenda 21 process, as is uh, the case in much of the rest of the world. The approach to sustainable development in the U.S is a set of policy approaches collectively referred to as smart growth. Smart growth is sometimes referred to as a uniquely American variant of sustainable development. Did you hear that, folks? Are you hearing this? The Pentagon wants an AI program to establish the science that uh, to apply to those three pillars the pillars of which called the third wave is the implementation of smart growth through policy. What have I been telling you? That's the administrative violation of your constitutions. This is the method we sued in 2013. Default judgment. 
so again, I can read, read, read it. We could read this. It's, I guess people find, oh, this is cool sounding stuff. I want to hear more. Yeah, I know you do. I want you to see it. I want there to be no question for you. Third wave is considered, in the context of the three pillars, smart growth and regional development. Regional development r translates over to consolidation of jurisdictions or multi multiple uh, discipline expertise, I guess I can say. What was it called before the third wave, though, as I understand it? Maybe not for you if you've learned this. How I heard it, and this came out of uh, also confirmation out of Hernando de Soto's book. I keep telling you about this is integral with this digital cashless thing and the destruction of your property law, uh, property titles and everything was in the mystery of capital. The clues that were left in that. He's a he's an, a Geneva-trained Geneva economist. He's, I understand he's still alive, and he's still in the forefront of this blockchain condition. He called this thing, and consistent with some other sources, wasn't the third wave, it's the third way. So let's punch that in. What's the third way? Up pops. I just do this, folks. It's just one document you can find all kinds. It all depends on what you're after. What pops up in to my in my search engine was this, and sufficient for these purposes: climate change and the third way: adapt, mitigate, or transform. Adapt, mitigate, or transform. Aren't those the words of implementation of the Agenda 21 of sustainable development? Climate change and the third way. So we have third wave as a, as a third way. There's really not much different. It just depends on how you want to apply it. I guess I could read a bit grim climate change reality. The seas are rising. Terrifying hurricanes regularly raise the vast inhabited areas. And wildfires are flaring up more frequently and causing massive damage. The United States government has spent nearly $3 billion on firefighting this year, estimated Prior to this month's going on, and this was back in 2017, the Thomas Fire in Southern California, uh, now the fourth largest state in history. The doom and gloom scenarios have prompted many in government and business to invest in ways to adapt to prepare for the worst. What does the, the fire policy say? You're going to learn to live with this. Adapt. While the, these efforts are to climate-proof operations, which is a climate change is a fraud the way it's been promoted, you're not going to climate proof anything, the best you're going to do is manage the watershed for its best productive value. Not non-use, but intensive use. And that climate proves it to the extent that nature will allow in any variant. But they say adapt. They're talking about you. You have to adapt. While this efforts, while these efforts in climate proof operations and supply chains are necessary, they are not merely enough. Well, supply chains happen to be their supply chains of implementation, their leveraged funding chains that keep it flying on your back, on your uh, property taxes that you don't know how to avoid because they're, they're, they've uh, mis, uh, the defamed the, the character of your title and all this other stuff I've talked about. Uh, it says no business wants to shift its priorities to a reactive firefight uh, on rising temperatures. But that's all based in a and a non-understanding of the condition of what's imposed upon here. And I, now that I remember I'm reading the firefight, this was condition. I found this climate change on the third way consistent with the third wave, consistent with what I was studying for firefighting to show you it's all connected there too. And we get us back to the EPA, remember. So that was the connection back to, to this thing. They talk about the third way. That is, again, sustainable development. The third wave is another way to describe the very same thing, that the Pentagon wants to make DARPA projects for AI to start declaring your future. It'll be the expert. And I told you that was coming I don't know, a couple of years ago, and I mentioned it again many months ago. I'm surprised how many months have passed. And here's the proof that that's the future. So if you think that I'm, I'm not really... I'm kind of out there. You have to start taking stock in how many times I've been correct on the point of how this thing goes through. And you better make a reassess, as they do an assessment. You better reassess what I've been saying relative to how this actually goes down and for why and how and the methods they're going to use to be able to stealthily bring that in. And that's, it's not so stealthy once you see them. 
they're making they're screaming and blowing horns actually no one it's this third way you know you're 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 going down left way or you're going down the right way they're going down the third way how's that the third way was the non lawful way it was the imposition way it was not done by government at all either it was just something it was a, someone's someone thought he had a good idea and they're going to get you to do it and you crickets are going to do it there's no doubt in my mind now, let me pull back. They talk about, in this, in this subject matter, they talk about um, sustainability. They talk about how are they going to do the AI, what do they put it up against, and it ends up being uh, this thing called risk assessment. Remember, they're, they're checking, they're monitoring against a risk. There's nothing different in the third way in why they're doing it then for that risk. Let me kick you back in to show how integrated the Environmental Protection Agency is to promote what the Pentagon's now going to take an authority, a military authority globally. It's called Integrated Assessment Models. So all of these things that are being built and the DARPA wants to now now be the definitive power to use is going to be placed through these integrated assessment models. There's nothing that's not within the reach of their science models or condition and control. As they force you, as a demand, to adapt. They force you to mitigate. And that mitigation is also a part of you them mitigating your harm to them. In other words, as an occupying force, they're doing the Libra code section of securing themselves in their position. Now you start to see the complete, the dynamic of how these words work in two ways, a double-edged sword. They're going to cause uh, the monitoring and analysis and evaluation to bring on the demand of the three pillars that the Pentagon AI system is now looking to take control over. If you think your little blockchain is outside of this, I just said a term, integrated assessment models, which will integrate everything you're doing in the way, in the, uh, the subject matter areas that they can tap from. So this was talked to, this, asset, this integrated assessment model condition and assessment, risk assessment management, I talked about a couple broadcasts back. It comes right back together with the three pillars that the Pentagon of all places is going to now work to implement as a superior authority. I hope you're catching this. They're taking away your ability to have a say. But it's being done on foundationless places that look like they have a foundation. Integrated assessment models are only models. They're based on a bean counter theory. I told you the economics. They're not based in reality. And if one thing you ever understand here with what I've been talking about, you will always be better to focus on reality than the model about reality. And that's the chasm. You have to get on the ground with what you're doing, and you've got to get rid of what they're doing in their models. Their models that assess models that are, they'll tell you in their documentation that they have actually no foundation. They're learning as they go. Well, you start to learn that, and you have a formidable answer to what's going on. Versus reality, you should win. I say should because not many people actually see reality. I've been pretty amazed at it. They look at, they look at what they think reality is, and they don't have a clue about it. We're really, really a messed up people anymore. So this social economic environmental pillars that the AI from Pentagon is, wants to take control over and they're the military power in the world and I'm not going to say that it's a military power at the odds of others because all the other nations are doing this too remember the rule of law is across around the world these everyone buys into sustainability it seems very few uh, don't agree uh, and these uh, control is raised up through different promotions to be the expert experts say but when you find out what those experts are it's a big magic show because it's not based in reality the science they say the best science is a fraud 
is not science. They tell you they have none. You've got to look behind the scenes and look under the cover, if you will, and see that it's not a big racing engine here. We're, we're looking at three, uh, you know, we're looking at a squirrel in a, in a wheel that runs this whole thing. And when you see that, you wonder, what? Well, well, how come this thing has gotten so much, how far distance on us so fast? Isn't there a parable between a hare and a tortoise or something? Yeah, I think that may be playing into that too. So integrated assessment models are one of the peer, uh, one of the tool things, uh, tool uh, considerations for the environmental pillar that the AI is going to be looking at through the Pentagon. Don't I, I don't know how you can't think that's an interesting problem as we roll into the future of what the imposition of the, of the demand is going to actually take, what form it's going to take. And so we have a short time here to understand this and start to work to undermine that part and actually end it. Because once we start bringing reality to bear, and the real law that everyone I hear wants to say, oh, doesn't that's just that's wrong. I don't want to bring that, as I have brought over and over today in this broadcast. That here, there's a whole bunch of people that have a right to go in the forest, and they're so. I hate to use the words. I mean, I, some of the words I don't have. They're just pathetic. I can't even go read a sentence. Are we that helpless, folks? Are we that helpless? Well, I think we are, and I think they've figured that out. So they've been they've been running a scam on us, and it's getting to the point the military is actually taking control of all of this. And if you don't think blockchains involved with this, and you don't think your property rights and all this stuff, just go read Agenda 21, what they call sustainable development. What you heard in the other document, they promote differently in the United States of America, and they implement through policy. Go to JeffersonMiningDistrict.com. Go to the left side. Go look at the caution. Policy consensus is what this thing is brought through. Did I say policy, folks? Policy consensus. Dispute resolution. Through the administrative side. There's no law on that. They implement all this through policy. We're finding, uh, simply looking at the administrative procedures, they do not regard the savings clause, and that's how you take them out. You don't have to know really that much, actually, once you see how this starts to play out. You're just looking for their Achilles heel at every turn because you know they've got one. They've actually got their guts opened up. You just haven't started kicking them around the, kicking them around the ground to, to make sure they can't keep themselves held together. These people are criminal. These people are cr felons. They're committing treason. And those things, I don't understand why, aren't, why we haven't been able to, to, to stop all that. It's that clear what's going on here. Now your military is getting involved. If you didn't think that we're living in an occupied country underneath a rule already, not your laws, a policy. Now, a policy of what? A concept. How ridiculous has it gotten that anybody would actually agree to that? How far have we gone from understanding the most basic things, the most simple procedures, how fast will we abandon those things that we thought were, were there to protect us, but somehow have been taken away from us, and no one ever challenged that part? How did they do that? How are we who we are that allows that? And I, and as I look at this, I move this thing, let's move on. These standards that we freely give up. We want to talk high and mighty. We want to talk all righteous, and we're taking the high, and we know we woke. And yet, the woke among us that are speaking speak nonsense at some level. Won't even keep the most basic protections against this very oppression. And I read this, this and this kind of disturbed me a little bit. And I've had to worry about, uh, not worry, I'm more I'm worried in fact of us, but concerned that we're listening to certain things. We jump into the emotion of it without really thinking through the ramifications and we're supposed to be the woke that understand this. And we'll completely, we'll involve our emotion on something. We'll be persuaded by a promotion. And we will allow ourselves to give up everything that would protect all of us when we focus in on something we may not like ourselves against somebody else. It came out pretty clearly in my mind when I read uh, this little next pro uh, uh, subject. And I'm found interest in this because if we abandon the principles, then what are we asking upon us? And that kicks us right back to why the Pentagon's going after the three pillars to control the science behind all of it. We've given it up. We don't understand the 
we're our, we have a whim and caprice, the lack of principle to maintain the most basic liberties, if I can call those, the most basic things. And this state, this little thing came out, and I'm not too much into it. Most, some of you probably know know about it. Maybe a lot, wholly a lot more than I do. I just heard about it, but I'm watching something going on uh, about this uh, New Mexico extremist. Muslim camp or something. Let me read the title. Despite plans of school shootings, dead child charges dismissed against three New Mexico extremists in Taos, New Mexico. And that title tells you a whole lot right there. Despite plans of school shootings, dead child charges dismissed again against three New Mexico extremists charges are dropped and they're complaining was an interesting, that's what caught my eye. Why would they be complaining at this stage? Despite finding plans of to wage acts of terrorism against a myriad of locations, which is improper, it's myriad locations. Remember how I've told you about that? We don't even have our language controlled, but at any rate, myriad means many. You don't put of after word many. But at any rate, reading. Despite finding plans to wage acts of terrorism against a myriad locations across the United States on their property, handwritten notes detailing ideal attack sites, calls for jihad against specific targets such as teachers, schools, banks, and corrupt institutions, and Todd, dead toddler and a dead toddler on their compound, a New Jersey judge dismissed all charges against three of the alleged terrorists who were reported to have trained children to be school shooters. Now, my problem, and I want to read more, it goes and says that he explains what the problem is. It makes some suggestions here about allegations, which should have warned him away from being disturbed that three people were let loose. Notwithstanding, you know, I'm not so much with the judges. But when you look at what the judge released them for, why there was the reason, I had to take a, a really critical view of this article in, implying that they, they should be held because there was allegations of certain things happening. When in fact, the article and the news says the prosecutors could not show beyond the mere suggestion that those things had happened in a probable caused hearing for the purpose. My problem with this is, that means someone who might consider themselves woke and a liberty-minded one and championing freedom and all this stuff, doesn't understand the basics of due process and be willing to look at that mere allegations to keep any one of us in jail before a trial. Is one of our problems. I'm really stunned at when I think about what I'm looking at here. We really have to check ourselves. Either there's a due process for everybody or there isn't. Either we just turn into maybe the European system. You're put in jail until the judge decides they can release you. Or we don't. Based in the charges, the, the process, the, the, the the power that can indict a ham sandwich and get a conviction could not produce more than a mere allegation. Should have been a big clue that maybe we want to protect that condition of due process, not overlook it because we feel that we look into the, the allegations that we want to put, give it merit and proof. You know, this thing actually stunned me to see this statement coming from this article and this author. There was a due process requirement that the, the ham sandwich indi indicter failed to meet, and that became a problem. But that became a problem to the author that said, oh, you, you shouldn't have done that. There must be an uh, ulterior motive. That's irrelevant to the point. See, there's all this other skullduggery that could be going on, but at the point of the function of the law that protects us, and not looking deeper, the simple due process requirements that were not met would, at, at the point it's sufficient to kick anybody out, needs to be honored. Otherwise, you have no protections. 
And because I see this article that is someone that I would have thought would have been one of the higher, um, I hate to use the word higher, but I mean the mo more stringent on the protection of that, to watch that be abandoned is quite startling. And it kind of indicative of what I see going on with a lot of social commentary. Principles are just abandoned just to be able to say the, say the meme or say the point or impose something. I don't even know what some of this stuff is that they impose just to be sounding, I don't know what, important, authoritative, what? I don't even know what it is when you're violating the due process required. They're there for a reason. The people with the power know that. They apparently lied when they arrested those people. I don't know what the truth is, folks. I don't know what the a jury or even the facts would actually show. But when it came down past the allegations for a what, folks? What all you uh, First Amendment auditors will say, what's your probable cause? When it came to making that, they couldn't meet that demand in the time it was required. Well, how indefinite do you want to make it? Ten days wasn't long enough? I'd have been shocked that they didn't do it immediately. I, I was shocked to see the ten days. And someone's complaining that they were released because the prosecutor couldn't produce probable cause to keep them? And you have a complaint? Any of you How would have a complaint? I find this shocking. I find how fast that was dropped in a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, because some magic words were stated is troubling, at the, at the least to me, is troubling. If there was no probable cause established within the statutory time that due process was considered to be proper and constitutional, who are we to have an opinion more? The government can certainly come back and fix it. And in fact, in this case, they've come and charged. A different jurisdiction comes and charges them in a different place, in a different charge. Why? Because they didn't have the probable cause. Now, who amongst you would want to see these people rotting in jail for their day in court when there was no probable cause there? And there's other issues here. I'm not going to get into it. More, the more I see this, it's just ridiculous. I, I, I've told you, just find the core problem, hit that one, and the rest of them fall away. All the rest of them are just going to be more heaping of a pile of the of the uh, inconsistency of our, of, our, of our interpretation and the inconsistency with which we hold dear certain protections. If you can't hold dear the protections, what are you even complaining about? And these protections, I'm telling you, are being interfered with. Uh, run around. They run around with the third way. They're not even in the way. They're just taking a third way. They're going through the, the forest at grandma's house. They're going to beat you there. When you find them in your house and you see the big teeth, you got to call them out. you gotta get, You got to stop it. You don't ask it questions. It took the third way. It didn't take the lawful way. The lawful way in this case was probable cause within a time. And I see complaints of the release of those people that didn't have probable cause placed in the evidence. I hope my point's made here. Because this is why we start to look at the wrong, we look at things the wrong way, make the wrong analysis. We start to, again, ask the wrong question. We get the right answer. And I think that leads me over to this this, this construct that we're developing all these these powers, these authorita that are authorities, whatever they end up being, they will press us. We we give them power because we don't address the right points. Has developed, and this is the thing that came like out of nine eleven. As I look, we're getting close to that time again. Another remembrance of of the, de, the dereliction of the United States government to protect protect you all, and then use that crisis. Never never waste a crisis. To harm you even further, and I hear crickets, is the invocation from that whole process of another control structure, which a lot of us just don't engage, don't have to, although that's it's coming into your town, it's not going into the trains, it's at the, it'll be at the buses. Oh, we've heard all the technology coming to do your facial character recognition to put you in this database that's going to be used, part of the AI Pentagon to assess your social, your economic, and your environmental consequence uh, and a, a failure to take on the obligation of the demand that's coming. Well, this is all tied together. But we have these, uh, these gatekeepers, uh, litter ones. You can't go through the gate without seeing these. And we see now a bunch of cases that came on that 
needs to be addressed, but I think is being addressed in the wrong way. I told you all, in dealing with this control structure, and remember, it's being imposed by policy. That's administrative on its face. You're going to have to deal with this TSA entity administratively. I don't know how many people listen to me. I don't know if anybody who doesn't listen to me knows what, what they're doing, uh, but this is how it's going to happen. I think we now have a whole set of oppressive decisions that are telling us that. I'm going to go through a whole bunch of these things. I don't know how much I want to deal with it. Some people aren't interested because they just won't take an airplane. They won't get on a bus or they won't, whatever, wherever the TSA is not. Remember, though, you're within a border, most likely within a border area, where they can start bringing this stuff in pretty much anywhere. And don't forget that your your ports, called airports, are international boundaries that have an extension to 100 miles out or 120 or whatever they make up. Remember, you're an occupied people, and you remain quick crickets to it. There is some cases that came down on this control grid, and it's all, I think, based in policy improperly approached. Like I said, you ask the wrong question, you get the right answer. It's like that smart grid, that smart meter case they went in and tried to make a Fourth Amendment issue out of it when they'd never showed that there was a problem in the due process of the State Utility Commission imposition in the first place, which I told you is where you need to go, where we're finding you're going to need to go. You go after the process, not all the minutia of what's, how it's hurting you. You say, wait a minute, you, you have to do the process right, the due process. You, you didn't come in within 10 days with, due, with probable cause. Fail. And you call that out. You don't let it continue. How, why isn't that answer better than telling everybody how much you know that's not applicable? TSA screeners win immunity from abuse claims, says an appeals court. Should startle people. Flyers may have a tough time recovering damages from invasive screenings at U.S. Air, uh, airport security checkpoints after a federal appeals court on Wednesday said screeners are immune from from claims under the federal law governing assaults, false arrest, and abuses. Folks, I'm, I'm going to approach it this way. I've asked you to take these kinds of factual points, even though it's an appeals court, and I guess it could go to the Supreme Court, and I guess they would give you their opinion. Right now, this is the reality. They're immune to commit assault, arrest, and abuses. I want to ask you to analyze it in this regard, as I've asked you before. In that, given that's the reality, not, not what we think, not our opinion about how bad that is, I'm asking what environment are you in when those, th those four points are, are the fact, that they can assault, arrest, or cause other abuses. It's four points. I know I named three, but the fourth one is they get to do it. What, what world are you living What country are you living in? You're living in a, a government of the free, the home, and the brave, and all that nonsense? Or not. And if you're not, I'm asking you all to rethink your environment and how you're going to go through that battlefield. Because if you don't, you're going to walk right into this wall. But these people that can commit abuses and arrests and assaults and false arrests appear at this decision to be immune. What, what reality causes, allows for that? Not that it doesn't fit a constitutional context the way we think about it. We think it's supposed to be. What are you in when that's the possibility that the, the gatekeeper has absolute despotic, tyrannical power? Can harm you with impunity. Are you living in a free America? You live in an America with free people? Or are you living somewhere else? TSA agents can now grope travelers without fear of pesky lawsuits, was a follow-up discussion. And, uh, Transportation Security Administration screeners have gained the upper glove when it comes to being sued by travelers subjected to assaults, false arrests, and other abuses thanks to a Wednesday ru ruling by the Federal's Appeal Court. Now, it wasn't Wednesday. I've had this tab on my board a long time now, and I'm finally getting to it. How little news I'm actually bringing up anymore. It's the same same stuff, so... I just want to get to certain points about this. The TSA is getting the upper hand, getting the upper glove. Pretty quick. That was clever. They're getting the upper glove on us, folks. And I told you you had to do this not through the courts first. You need to go through the policy side, the administrative side. In a two-to-one decision, the third U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Philadelphia ruled that TSA screeners are not, quote, investigative or law enforcement officers 
which shields them from liability under the Federal Tort Claims Act. Well, isn't that special? In one paragraph, I said, don't go to the courts yet, and they went to the courts, and the courts came back and said, well, underneath this act that you sued under, they aren't considered that status of investigative or law enforcement officers. I look at that and say, okay, I can't go as a tort claim, and I, and I now know that they're not investigative law enforcement officers because I'm not going to make the case that overturns this decision. This is the way it's going to go. What other remedy might I have? Underneath the federal tort claims, doesn't look like it. Do we have others? Well, I think that there are. I talk to you about them a lot. I tell you, to get a federal officer, you have to find a state law violation, and maybe it's not a tort you're looking at. Did I, those of you that listened to me, are you, did, I, did that give you a little bit of a, hopefully a little spark? Not that you want to do anything, but that, oh, there's a different way to look at this. Oh, that's what they said. Oh, that's the limit of that opinion. Because, on the first hand, if we live in a completely occupied, um, militarized state, what rights do you have? On the other hand, for those of you that there are, say there's a constitution and you have these certain rights, I'm saying you don't even understand those rights. That if you then looked at it and said, well, that is an occupation, notwithstanding that, what might I bring to make those vulnerable? Those guys, those abusers, you think that there's a land, even under the Libra Code, they can't abuse. Did that spark a little light in your mind? Not that you want to do anything, but maybe I'm trying to show you, don't be defeated by this stuff and take counsel from it. I'm saying don't go down that path now that, they, now that we see that there's going to be an obstruction to it. But I wouldn't have gone down that path to start with. So to me, that's fine. To some people that might uh, throw down the due process, they're going to say, oh, look how tyrannical the TSA is. And this is pretty tyrannical, but just the, in a defeated sense is what they respond. I knew it. I knew they would have the power. Well, in a way, they don't. But it's going to take some real knowledge to understand this thing and then the right application to get at it. And I said, as I said, I've, I've been saying, Likely, it's got to go through the administrative side, and I've delineated why. Because there is standards, but like any other policy consideration, it's given deference without actual foundation, and no one attacked that within the, within the uh, condition. I've also told you that you get federal agents by showing they violated state law. And you, they violate that law outside of any constraint that would allow them to. Now, this one says that they had a status. You make sure that when you find the state law, there's no status they can be. That doesn't bring them into liability or culpability. See, I'm not talking about the news. I'm not talking about the TSA. I'm talking about how do you get against, how do you start to move against oppression? And there's ways to do it. I can't know that it's going to be successful. I can say that if you walk into a court right now with the way the law is and the way the deference is given to a tyrant in administrative capacity, you're going to lose. What we don't know is what is acceptable underneath that condition. That's determinable through, through making records in administrative side, things that are administrative side. They have to... One of the rules I point, I told you, and I don't know if this is completely what you would... Uh, need you might need a little bit more was their invasions are not supposed to be without a reason behind them they're supposed to be the least invasive i don't know of anybody that's challenged that line where is the line how do they have i've asked you before to ask the question how do you have a right to presume me a terrorist an enemy combatant that i have an intention an ill intention that you can even treat me underneath this what was the least invasive by that status? Not the one you've imposed. And I'm not talking whether you're an investigator or not. I don't care. What right does anybody have is where you want to go. Anyway, what occurred to me when I read that article about this thing that I don't know, I didn't hear many people talking about it. Uh, it didn't make a big deal on, on any of the social media that I knew about. It should have made a big deal. What people did is they just back. I'm not. I don't fly anyway. 
that's not really the answer here, and that's why this thing gets worse and continues. But my, I, I had a little take on this, and uh, I put it out quite a few weeks ago. In paraphrasing this condition that you read, that they can assault and abuse and other abuses, and it occurred to me another type of condition that we've heard of, another one of those veneers of condition and control and regulation, long historic, that came to mind when I read that they can, when you read the little phrase uh, that they can abuse, harass, you know, whatever. Or was it uh, assault, false arrest, and abuse? You know, false arrest. I read that a long time ago. False arrest is a is a is a crime. I mean, it's just officers are subject to false arrest. I don't care what status they might be put under. But underneath the false claims act, you can't get them as a private party, whatever their status. How about going into the to the the, the law that says that any false arrest is a crime? And that's what I'm talking about establishing on the policy side. These, these standards. So you see assault, for false arrest, and abuses. It triggered something in my mind. Uh, so TSA, TSOs are only employees and thus can hang, waste, boil, flail, strangle, and bury alive, rip up the stomachs and wombs of those women and crush their infant heads against the walls in an order to annihilate forever their inexorable race. And we consider this as lawful, is the Jesuit oath. See, to me, you want to do false arrests and abuses and other abuses? I think the Jesuit oath comes came apparent in my mind. Not only can do you can you falsely arrest and you can abuse people, but you can hang them, you can waste, you can boil, flail, strangle, bury them alive, rip up the stomachs and the wombs of their women, and crush their infant heads against the walls because they're immune. Sounds kind of ridiculous, right? It's a reality, but it sounds kind of ridiculous. So in that reality ridiculous conundrum is your pathway. This is lawful, folks, I ask. Is this is lawful? You need to answer that question, not abuse it, not, not look away, not think you answer it. Answer that question. That's either lawful, and you all just give it up, or it's not, and there's a pathway to stop this nonsense. And those of you that, none of you that want to step up is our, our problem. Some of you that want to and take it on, you could be the one that helps us in that regard. We all need to help each other. I can't remember the guy, first name's Jonathan, I think just came to my mind, who's on the TSA. I said a long time ago, maybe he, you can address, jump in with him. Find out what he's got going. Find out how his cases went. But here's some guidances that they're going to give immunity for abuse and assaults, folks. False arrests is not law. And so what's the answer if that's not law? Is there law or only that law that's not available? I think, still, there is a law. You just have to bring it correctly. Don't ask the wrong question. You'll get the right answer. In this case, I think this is really needs to be record made in the administrative side because they give the agencies deference to their authority. And the national security interest is quite an awesome power to be wielded. My question is, how did they get you to violate? How did they not violate Article um, uh, the Bill of uh, the, the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights, enforcing an association with a criminal act? How did they do that? And what's the minimal, the least they have to do underneath this new, the better standard than imposing and defaming and maligning your character in order to impose these rules that you have are otherwise subject to because you didn't question. And you think this is a, some lightweight thing. You think that the data collection, we're back to data collection, this is military and this is what they're using, this is the best science they're going to bring on. You're not going to have a word here pretty soon. Anyway, I mean, as, as I see it. Because their AI is going to have the answer for you, right? Because it beats everybody in their debates, doesn't it? It was only supposed to augment some of that decision-making, but no, no, now it's the authorita that you now are forced to believe the demand upon you is its authority. And you were crickets. And because you were crickets, you didn't. You asked the wrong question, you got the right answer, you couldn't formulate a beachhead anywhere, and then you couldn't actually move forward with a, with a successful plan, they win. 
And so then you become subject to all this other nonsense. Have you gained or lost weight? Congrats, the TSA is now tracking you for suspicious activity. What have I said? You find this stuff out. This was not known before they were doing this. It's now coming on the record. It's now provable. You now have the reason to believe that what they did was not proper. You now have the administrative side potential without jeopardy to you to challenge this condition. I tell you this as evidence to allow you to open the door to the administrative process that you can challenge how it is that they can start tracking whether or not you lost weight, gained weight, whatever they're doing with their list of things to, uh, in, to continue this process of monitoring the criminals amongst them. Why? Quiet skies. We're back to that story. Why? You don't do this administratively. The courts are going to beat you. In Quiet Skies program, the TSA is tracking regular travelers like terrorists in secret surveillance. How long have I been telling you that? You're going to be tracked like enemy combatants. It said it in the PATRIOT Act, didn't it? Way back in 2001. Didn't it? This is not new news. They're taking advantage. No one stepped in and said, wait a minute. How, how is it you're treating me as a terrorist? Where'd that come from? And then a whole lot of list of questions beyond that. Federal Air Marshals blow the whistle on TSA Quiet Skies Travel Surveillance Program. What's the importance of this? Again, you got them arguing with themselves. You didn't know this is there. You now, now they testify to, against themselves that this program that does this arbitrary and capricious thing that has not been tested for its um, minimum intrusion can now be known and and, te and challenged administratively, and they can't stick it underneath the national security uh, redaction is the other point. TSA tells Congress it's spied on 5,000 people not worth being spied on. It's my question. How are you doing this? Where's the probable cause? If I can release some people in New Mexico because there was no probable cause, how come you can do it administratively? It has never been challenged. And it isn't a challenge. It's a, an assertion of your right not to be interfered with like this. This is now public knowledge. This is not can't be hidden underneath the redaction principle of national security. TSA defends Orwellian secretive domestic surveillance program. How? It, it, on its word, folks. Nobody challenged them. I wish you would. I wish somebody would. Get up with that Jonathan guy, that kid. I don't, I don't know. Help him. Exposure of secret TSA surveillance program nets the government more terrorist watch list litigation. How if it's not valid? On their word? That's giving it over to them. You give the occupier your power. Because you don't want to step up in an administrative side and get this written all down in the record. How? And then challenge each one and step. Make yourself a thorn in their side. Permanent emergency. Trump becomes the third president to renew extra, extraordinary uh, post-9-11 powers. This is what we've been talking about. How you've been being taken down. Those Trumpians out there, he's just given himself that power. To continue a fraud. To continue, notwithstanding that, even if it was real, continue an oppression that uh, has no basis in fact, has no basis in reality, and presumes upon you a defamation of your character as a terrorist. No one's challenged this stuff. It needs to be challenged. It's your time, folks. Trump just took on the mantle of the oppressor. I don't know how you can support all that. Thank you for being uh, with listening today. I hope you learned something or got expired or got new awareness or whatever it takes to get you to move forward. I want something more than the cricket sounds I hear, the sound of silence. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Uh, thank you to um, uh, all the people who mirror the broadcast. Thank you very much for all you do to uh, shout out and broadcast and link and all whatever you do, like or whatever it is uh, on, the, on the network. So I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs> 